I'd like to echo, you know, what's said about, you know, uh, this COVID-19. And I want to congratulate Kevin New and the, uh, you know, CAS board for really putting on this excellent program. And, uh, you know, this COVID-19 symposium this morning was uh, outstanding. And also um, Seattle Science Foundation has been a great collaborator and enabler for this uh, tough time. So really best wishes and uh, health and uh, safety for everyone. So my talk is on a, a region, revision cervical spine surgery, which is a huge topic. So I'm just going to focus on uh, two aspects of that, which is pseudoarthrosis and cervical deformity. And you can see my disclosures uh, as shown there. So as you know, there are many uh, etiology for revision surgery, and, and I'm not going to you know, list you know, right there the non-union deformities we're going to talk about. But this is a case example of an infection case that uh, came elsewhere with uh, osteomyelitis, uh, you can see epidural abscess, uh, so it requires revision anterior surgery, which you, you do that with ENT surgeon carefully to not to avoid, you know, another esophageal tear and uh, you do a uh, thorough debridement, anterior uh, corpectomy and posture instrumentation that I did uh, about five years ago. This is a more recent case of previous laminectomy and fusion, but this patient came in with a uh, really profound myelopathy with a basal invasination. So revision, you know, posterior surgery with the previous laminectomy is uh, kind of, you, you got to do it very carefully. And I, I had to do a, a C1 occiput uh, laminectomy decompression with the uh, uh, stabilization, as you can see there. So I can, you know, give you a lot of cases like that, but I'm going to talk about pseudoarthrosis first. You know, there are many factors, right? Uh, patient factors and biomechanical factors, surgical techniques, which gonna, I'm going to mention. But I want to say that not all pseudoarthrosis are symptomatic. In fact, that you know, you, there are a little hairline pseudoarthrosis because pseudoarthrosis comes in different uh, types. Obvious uh, loosening, like you can see in this case, but some cases they are, may have some mild neck pain, but it's not that symptomatic, or symptoms are very minimal that doesn't require another surgery. So differential diagnosis of neck pain following, you know, uh, obviously uh, fusion surgery can be many, including adjacent segment and uh, myofascial pain and so forth. So if you indeed find that uh, patient is severely symptomatic due to arthrosis, you have two approaches after ACDF, revision ACDF, by my preference is posterior prime anatomy and fusion. Now, just to prevention for uh, non-union, obviously I can talk about it forever, but really it's a carpentry, right? You have to do a, a real good Everybody does a good discectomy and decompression, but it's how you do the uh, uh, bone preparation and plate preparation. I create a nice uh, parallel um, surface with the, uh, I usually put a two millimeter hole on, on the top and bottom to really bring the, uh, the bone marrow, the, uh, the uh, vascular supply. If you uh, destroy the end plate, you may have a better uh, vascularity, but you uh, obviously uh, decrease the end plate strength, you're gonna, you're gonna have a subsidence. Graft thickness is very important. Published a long time ago that you don't want to put a uh, really large graft, then you over distract it, hyper uh, lordotic, uh, then you can cause facet impingement. And type of graft, obviously, you put in is important. Uh, I, I tend to favor cortical cancellous allograft. In fact, there is a minimal uh, uh, information in the literature of what's the best uh, type of implant. It's a little controversial, but I'm biased toward rigid uh, fixation because rigidity cause minimal motion between the bone graft and end plate, actually overrides the, you know, shed shielding effect, cause more union. In fact, uh, there are some studies showing that rigid plate favors uh, 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 sort of translational or, or, or targeting type of um, uh, plate for uh, better stability and fusion. Now, in terms of what to put in, obviously there are many things you can put in with, you know, uh, P cages, now 3D titanium implant. By my a uh, favorite uh, uh, antibody space is still cortical cancellous frozen allograft. I really have not too many failures, whether it's a one level, two level, even three level, recently to be published, over 90% fusion rate at all levels. If you do a good carpentry with a good uh, uh, fixation uh, um, with a place sense screws. And obviously, you know, uh, you, I'm sure you have your own favorites uh, with improvement of cage de design, which will also improve the uh, fusion rate as well. 
Now, I just want to uh, uh, spend a little more uh, time about the surgical technique. Hey guys, thanks for watching. To continue, please log in or create an account for free. Thank you for your support.